two massive bags filled with books. I don't always intend to judge books by their covers, but when it comes to a Waterstone sale, I have no choice. My heart literally, like, why would they do that to me? He's dead, so who cares what he thinks? Hey besties, it's Joel, and welcome to Fictional Fates After Dark. Not exactly where I was going with that, but um, I, I guess it works now because I'm recording a video at night. I hope you're all doing very well, and if you've yet to take a drink of water, please do so. We must remain well and hydrated. And if you've yet to check out my Instagram nor my Twitter, I would highly recommend you go check those out as well because I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. So I have my cup of tea right over here. I got another mug from Roundabout Ceramics. They're literally one of my favorite ceramicists on the planet. Like their mugs are just so cute and amazing. I'll have their Instagram linked in the description down below. We have candles burning. There's actually three, but I think you can only see two. There is a third one right by here. It smells like vanilla. But anyways, the reason why I'm doing this kind of like spontaneous video is that today I went book shopping because Waterstones had decided to choose violence this holiday season. and. And basically, oh my god, wait, happy holidays everyone, I hope you've been celebrating well and have been celebrating with your families no matter what you celebrate. Going back to Waterstones with Choosing Violence, they basically decided to have a Boxing Day sale that lasted only three days. They had hardbacks at half price, 50% off. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna order a bunch of books online and have them shipped here. It was only in store. It was only in store and I didn't know whether I was gonna be able to make it in store because I'm suffering from just a bit of seasonal depression. I just didn't, haven't really been wanting to go out, but then a bunch of you did convince me to go to the sale today, and so I did, and yeah, now I have two massive bags filled with books. There's five books each in these bags, and so I'm very excited to show them to you today. If you've been participating in the Barnes & Noble or the Waterstone sale, let me know in the comment section down below what books you bought, what books you're looking forward to reading, or if you received any books from this past holiday season, let me know. Yeah, I just think it'd be really cool to see like what new books that we have been graced with. I mean, I for one didn't get any books from anyone, but that's because I don't trust my family to buy books for me. I tr let them once buy a book for me, and they ended up getting me the second book in a series I had never read, and so I can't trust them anymore. They get, they had their shot and they failed. And so here we are. I have bought myself some books to celebrate Christmas. I got 10 books and I ended up spending 40 pounds in total because I had 50 pounds on my Waterstones card that I've been like saving up for the past like year. And so I really just was like, I'm gonna use it today. And so I did. Let us get into this haul. We're probably just gonna cover the books quite quickly, talk about them a little and yeah. Grab your beverages, settle down. Uh, this is gonna be quite cozy. I I think it's just a chill, relaxed video today. And so I think it'd be really cute. Let us get into it. I'm gonna start with this Waterstones tote bag because this is the new one that I got today because I already had this like navy one, but I had to get another one to carry the rest of the books in. The first book I got is the late night book club pick for the month of January. And that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley in the Penguin Clothbound Classics. I just love the design of this. It is so stunning. I have the Penguin English Library Edition, which is basically like a similar design to this. Some plus Frank Frankenstein is one of my favorite classics. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And all of you will get to read this with us in January and see the live show, which is gonna be very exciting. But yeah, I just, I can't wait to like reread this in this edition. It's gonna be really cool. The next book that I then got is a bit of a massive one. It's another Penguin Clothbound classic, but maybe one of the oldest books in existence. And that is Don Quixote by Cervantes, which is basically the oldest novel in, I think, European history. It's gonna be really interesting for me to read this in a few months and gather my opinions on like the early formations of the novel and like what the first novel in the West was like. I mean, there had been novels previously written in the East, like China. China had a bunch of novels that had already existed. Same with the Greeks. The Greeks had like early formations of the novels. And so like the world's first novels would be something pretty cool to examine. Coraline Bickford Smith is the one that designs like these kinds of covers and they're just so gorgeous and amazing. Yeah, you know me. Right, I don't always intend to judge books by their covers but when it comes to a Waterstone sale, I have no choice. I have no choice. So it happened. <laughs> the next book I then got is another collector's edition, and that is The Colour of Magic by Terry Pratchett, which is basically the first Discworld novel. I read a lot of Discworld as a kid. It was available in my school's library, and so I used to check out some of the books a lot. I remember, like, at some point I realised I had read some of the books out of order and got really frustrated with myself, but I really want to try and get back into Discworld next year and, like, start rereading 
including like the arcs of Discworld, like the mini series in there, because there's like 40 ish books of Discworld. And so I really want to like try and start working my way through rereading Discworld. But I'm really excited to reread it and just rediscover some of the magic from me as being a child reader. The next book I then got was Reprieve by James Han Matson. And this has like this really cool like blood drip effect on like the side. And I was utterly obsessed. And then I like opened the book and read the synopsis. And I was like, okay, I will try this. Basically follows these group of people who are in the final cell of an escape room, uh, which is known for like being really monstrous and being like horrific. And so if they can endure this like final room, they'll, they'll walk away with $60,000 and they'll be like the only other group in the history of this escape room to have won. However, someone gets killed. <laughs> and so we read the perspectives of like the different contestants within this escape room and see like what the heck is going on. And according to the bottom, it's supposed to be a stunningly soulful exploration of complicity and masquerade. And so I'm very excited to read this and see like whether it can deliver on that. And I'm just excited to delve more into different types of horror as well and see what things I can gather from it. There's nothing on the nakedness of this book though, although the reprieve is like a shiny green, which is really great to see. The design and illustration of this was also done by Greg Heinemann. And so like, it does look like a really cool cover as well. And then the last book for this bag that I got, In Every Mirror She Is Black by Lola Akimade Akastrom. And this book is blurred by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And so I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm going to get this because I love Taylor Jenkins Reid and her novels. And so just from reading the synopsis, it looks like this novel is going to tackle the difficulties faced by black women in American society. And I think it's just another novel that will prove to be extremely important during our current climate as like black women are one of the most oppressed peoples within society today. And some of my friends have read this as well and have just spoken really good things about this book. And so I'm quite excited to read it and see whether I feel the same way. Also, can we talk about this cover illustration for a second? Like, it is stunning. It's done by Kimberly Glider. On the nakedness, it's like a red naked book. And then it's got like white writing on there. Like it's quite matte as well. And so, yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty good book. We're now halfway through the book haul. So this is your chance to go like top up your drink if you haven't already. My tea is still warm, which is good. But no, I'm really excited about the next year and like reading and seeing where everything's going to take me. I think I have so many cool ideas for this next year in terms of content, but I really also love to know some ideas that you have for videos that you want to see from me. I'll probably do an Instagram question sticker right after recording this video, but I also want you to leave some in the comment section down below for videos that you'd like to see next year as well, because I think it'd be really cool to like have that. So I definitely want to try and implement some of your ideas that I find personally interesting and just seeing different videos that will really challenge what booktube can be. And now we will proceed on to the second bag. But the first one I got is Ruth Ozeki's The Book of Form and Emptiness. And this is the Waterstones exclusive edition. It has like these really cool like, I'm gonna guess like stenciled edges uh, because everything is very like precise and exact. So I'm assuming it is a stencil. I literally thought that, that I literally thought that had bent, but it's literally the end paper. My heart, my heart literally, like, why would they do that to me? That is so rude. There's nothing on the nakedness, but it's a shimmering gold, which I'm a really big fan of. Like, I don't know what it is with UK publishing and being afraid to put things on the nakedness. However, if Wub Wub ever gets published, Wub Wub being the novel that I'm working on, I really want something on the nakedness. I picked up the book of form and emptiness because a lot of people have been recommending it to me and the synopsis just seemed particularly interesting. It's very long in and of itself, but the the Book of Form and Emptiness blends unforgettable characters, riveting plot, and vibrant engagement with everything from jazz to climate change to our attachment to material possessions. So I'm excited to see like what this offers and if I'll like it or not. The design of this was done by Jill Healy and I just think I am really looking forward to reading this as well. The next book that I then got was purely because I recently finished the second season and was like, okay, I really want to start reading the books that inspired it because I know there's some differences between the books and the show. And then I saw this in Waterstones and I was like, ooh, this is literally something that I'm going to get. And that is The Witcher, The Last Wish, Illustrated Edition. Oh, yes. So we do have something on the nakedness. People like to invent monsters and monstrosities, then they seem less monstrous themselves. Said by Geralt of Rivia, and it's just done in this like shiny red writing and it is sexy, sexy. Well done. And the illustrations inside look 
really stunning. It's done in like this black, white, and red colorization, and it's very interesting, but I, I'm obsessed with it. I think it looks really good. I'm excited to read this. So The Witch of the Last Wish was written by Andrei Sapkowski and was translated into English by Danusia Stock. And basically this, I think, is a collection of short stories within the witchy universe. And I think this book is what inspired season one of The Witcher. And so I'm very excited to like read this. And I know the show is different, but I'm still excited to read it nonetheless. I'm also really excited to start playing the video games because I had The Witcher 3 on Steam, but I hadn't actually played it. So I bought The Witcher 1 and 2. And I'm just going to play the series through eventually because I also recently bought myself a gaming laptop because uh, trying to play games on my MacBook was awful. So as a Christmas gift to myself, I got myself a gaming laptop. I'm still building a gaming PC, but this is just to buy me time until I can actually get a graphics card because, you know, supply chains, cryptocurrency miners. I'm really excited to read The Last Wish, and I think it's gonna be super awesome. The next book that I then got was one which I didn't realize I was gonna get until I saw it, and then I was umming and ahhing about it, and I was like, I'm gonna get it. So I got The Call of Cthulhu and Other Weird Stories by H.P. Lovecraft. If this is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition, I didn't get half price on this because it's a paperback. Yeah, H.P. Lovecraft. Massive racist. Like, I, I played a video game last year called The Call of Cthulhu, and I was just obsessed with it and just thought it was really awesome. Now I want to read kind of some more of the source material, delve into a bit more cosmic horror, because there are just certain elements of it that I really find fascinating. I definitely want to delve into cosmic horror a little bit into my writing in the future, and so I think it'd be really cool to see, like, how Lovecraft does it. I think it's cool when we get more diverse voices within certain areas. There's ways you can take the lessons of Lovecraft and adapt them into, whilst things he may not like, he's dead. So who cares what he thinks? I'm really excited to read this and gather some inspiration from it. The penultimate book that I then got from Waterstones was Jade, Fire, Gold by June C.L. Tan. Yeah, I'm obsessed with the look of this book. I love the US cover a lot more. However, I want to support June and so I got this as well, but it's like this orange nakedness with like gold writing. Reading the synopsis, it really sounds like a heterosexual vision of the untamed. I think it's really awesome. This is pitched as Girls of Paper and Fire meets A Song of Wraiths and Ruin. So if you liked either of those two books, I'm sure you probably might like the look of Jade Fire Gold. I'm really excited to read this and see if I like it. Also, I do know The Untamed has now come out as like translated novels. I'm waiting for all three of the volumes to come out because I think there's only gonna be three volumes and then I want to do like a massive reading vlog of them because, you know, I think it'll be nice to like read the story in one go. Maybe I'll rewatch The Untamed as I'm reading it. Do I want to deal myself that much pain? Absolutely. But yeah, I think it'd be pretty awesome. I'm really excited to read this and I'm hoping, I'm praying it's going to be good. And the final book that I got from Waterstones was A Marvelous Light by Freya Musk. And first of all, this cover, this cover is stunning. I think it's amazing. It was done by Will Stale. And this is also the Waterstones signed exclusive edition, which has these like orange sprayed edges. The nakedness, it's, there's nothing. There's just blue. But the writing is white. This book just seems really interesting and magical. Magical, and also seems a bit gay, uh, which I love. My friend Asia recently picked it up as well. I think some of my other friends really liked this book, and so I'm really excited to read it and just be falling in love with this story. As drawn together by unexpected perils, Robin and Edwin will discover a mystery as old as the power that binds the land, a plot that threatens every magician in the British Isles, and a secret that some have already died to keep. And so that just sounds really cool, really sexy, really awesome, and I'm excited to read it. I think this book is going to be amazing. I really want to read this in in January just so that I have like I have a strong start to the year. I'm kind of trying to curate my TBR at the moment and seeing which books I will fall in love with and think are going to be amazing so that I have a really strong start and that I'm more optimistic about the year ahead because I want to try and read a hundred books in 2022, like finally get to 100 books in 2022, and we'll see how that goes. Fingers crossed, besties. Ah, so yeah, this is basically the 10 books that I got at Waterstones. In total, I got all these 10 books for 40 pounds. Did I need these books? Yes. Do I have the space for these books? No. Do I care? No. I'm moving out in like a few months. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So hopefully I'll be able to expand my bookshelves and have a lot more space for them then. Although I will be doing like a massive unhaul, I think, nearer the time of me moving out. However, that is it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this like late night video. It is 10 o'clock. It is 10.04 p.m. I mean, I could have recorded this video at 1 a.m. I just loved the fact that a lot of you already wanted to see this book haul as soon as I like took the Instagram photo today. But you know, I'm really happy that I 
I actually did it and I really got to discuss these books with you. If you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here be sure to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. I'll have all my social medias in the description down below for you so that you can check me out on every single other platform and that is basically everything for today besties. I am just really excited to see what books you recently got for the holidays or that you got in the sales. Yeah we can have a discussion in the comments even reply to other people's comments as well besties. Let's get a discussion going. And so yeah, I guess until the next time. Bye besties.